All right, so I'm going to be opening and disassembling this Acer Nitro 5 model number N20C1. All right, so I believe the actual model number is this AN515-55-53AG. All right, so anyways, let's go ahead and disassemble this. We're going to use a PH1 or JIS1 screwdriver and remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put the flat side like that on my desk in the pattern I remove it. All right, so you can see there's three here, three here, you got one here, and then you got four down here. So that's how I, how I will put the screws in the pattern on my desk, all right? If this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices. Helps you save a bunch of money. Please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, these are customer computer repairs, so I don't own these laptops. Um, by the time you see this video, I likely won't have it in my possession anymore. So keep that in mind. Um, and you'll, as you'll see, I'm not going to do a complete disassembly because I just need to figure out what's going on with it and hopefully I can fix the issue for the customer. Um, I don't like risking taking everything completely apart unless I need to because sometimes you can actually cause more harm than good. So we're just gonna go ahead and see what's going on. So this laptop has been having blue screen issues. I noticed it happened more when I actually moved the computer around. So it could be that the Either something is loose inside or the motherboard has some micro fractures in it. If that's the case, it's probably not going to be worth repairing. But anyways, now that we got all the screws out, I'm going to get my fingernails in the gap here and see if I can pop this cover off. All right, so I'm going to just run my fingernails along here and push with my thumb here while I pull with my fingers back. Okay, here you can see the clips are popping out. Okay, so this does work as a way to take apart this laptop. I'm going to slide my fingernail along this gap up here as well. And you can see it's coming out pretty easily. Okay, so I skipped the little connector here, but we're gonna continue working our way up. Okay, and it looks like it's stuck there. So let's go ahead and go around to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, just pop that up. Here you can see it's popping out nicely. Okay, and then again, it's getting stuck up here. So I'm not sure where the, oh, okay, I see. I think the gap is all the way up here. So let's go ahead and try and pop that out. Okay. All right, it looks like it's popping up. Okay, so we're gonna continue working our way down. Similar thing, pulling and pushing with my thumbnail there. Okay. Wow, this is actually tough to remove. So let's see, let's go along here as well. Okay, there we go, it's coming out. And work our way over and I think it's completely removed all right so now that we popped all those clips out let's go ahead and remove this bottom cover okay so let's go ahead and just lift this up just like that here you can see the inside so it looks like there's two spots where they would have SSDs there um, so I see one SSD here okay and then we got two sticks of RAM so there's a 256 gig Western Digital PCIe NVMe SSD here. Okay, so again, it is PCIe NVMe. I'm gonna check the RAM and the SSD because it was giving like memory issues. So let's go ahead and undo the screw here. It pops up slightly at an angle. I'm just gonna wipe these connectors down, push it back in, all right, just like that. Drop it back down and then get the screw back into place. All right, so I'm mainly just gonna be showing what it looks like in here. It looks like they have room for a two and a half inch SATA hard drive, but you do need an adapter. There's no connector for the hard drive here. I'm guessing it connects here, but it doesn't say anything. Okay, so there's this plastic latch. You can flip that white latch up like that, and then you can put that in. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at what else we have inside here. So you got the speaker here, this kind of connector. You kind of just wiggle it and pull it back. I'm not gonna remove it wireless. Uh, card here it comes out just like the SSD um, the wireless antennas you just pull it up straight from the tail um, if you want to see how to do that I have other videos where I actually remove the wireless card you can watch those again there's no issue with this so I'm not gonna mess with it all right got the fan connector here these fans there's two screws 
I'm not sure. It looks like you'd probably have to take the heatsink out to get it out. CPU and GPU are under here. GPU's here, CPU's here. They are soldered to the motherboard, so you can't upgrade them. Charge port is soldered to the motherboard as well. All right, another fan connector. You got the LCD or LVDS connector here for the screen. If you're going to mess with that, make sure to disconnect the um, battery and then open up the computer and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power to make it safer to work on. All right, it looks like this board is completely separate. There's two USB ports, the headphone jack, the Ethernet port, um, all on this board, as well as one of these speakers connect there. Um, it was giving a USB error so at one point, so let me just make sure all of this is in place tight. Okay, all right, there's a little connector down here. I believe that connects up to this. I'm not sure what this is for. Um, keyboard connector here has a little sliding latch mechanism to release it. I'm pretty sure this is for the trackpad or touchpad. Um, let me see if there's a label on it. Um, JBL2, so maybe, I don't know, BL, that's probably a backlight, but anyways, there's the keyboard backlight connector here, then you got the BIOS CMOS battery connector here, and then the battery connectors underneath here, you just have to wiggle and pull that back. The left side has the black wires on it, and the right side has the red wires, so if you replace the battery, make sure you don't flip it upside down. Here's the battery model number, AP18E8M. All right, the customer replaced the SSD, or they added RAM on their own, so they have two different kinds of RAM. Um, I did test the RAM in MemTest, so I don't think the RAM has an issue, um, but yeah. All right, and then there's the second slot here for an SSD. They have a screw here for it. Um, it supports PCIe and SATA, so you can use any. I would recommend using a PCIe M.2 SSD because they're faster, so both sides support both M.2 and PCIe. Uh, uh, PCIe and uh, SATA. Anyways, I'm going to just wipe the contacts of these sticks of RAM. Sometimes they can cause issues, but again, I did run mem tests and it didn't have any issues. I'm, I'm thinking it's a motherboard issue because the computer worked perfectly fine. I was running a um, GPU stress test, but when I picked it up to move it somewhere, that's where it had issues. So I have a feeling that it's a motherboard issue and there's probably a micro fracture in the board those kinds of things I don't think there's any way to fix that so we're most likely gonna consider this not repairable um, I'm gonna see about doing a clean install but again because it's when I move the computer I doubt that's gonna fix anything um, so yeah I'm gonna clean a little bit of this dust off it's not too bad inside but since I have it open, might as well. Okay. All right. These fans have some dust on them, so I'm just going to brush it off a little and then use my handheld air blower to clean it. Again, it's not too bad, so I'm just going to blow it out in my work area. I don't really worry too much. All right. There we go. Oh, there's a big dust ball. Okay, they likely clean it out every so often because the only dust was like in the hinges. Okay, so we receded that stuff. I don't think these would be an issue. So I'm not too sure what would cause that blue screen error that it's giving. Uh, but anyways, this was just kind of a more of a quick look inside to show you what is in here. Um, I'm going to now put it back together. Everything else looks okay. The battery, if you're going to remove it, there's one screw down here, and then it looks like one screw up in this corner. So it is looks like it's only held in two corners. And then it looks like this side has a latch holding it, and then this side has some latches holding this. So I think you have to lift it up from this, from the back side up, and then pull it out, and then you can pull the other side out. But um, yeah, okay, let's go ahead and reassemble this. That's pretty much all there is to see inside here that I'm going to show. I'm not going to take the motherboard out. So anyways, hopefully this video at least helped you if you're going to add another SSD or change the RAM or add the RAM. Um, but yeah, other than that, let's put this back together. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Yeah.
All right, let's go ahead and snap this all back together. Pretty simple, everything just clicks back into place. I'm just gonna push everything back down, all right. Make sure it all clicks and locks into place. Good, all right, let's get all these screws back in. Other than that, we are good to go. All right, you're welcome to stay as I put back the rest of the screws, but pretty much the end of the video. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. All right. Let's get all these screws back in. That's a lot of screws. That's pretty much it. See you all in the next one. All right, let's flip this over and actually power it on and see if anything changed. Screen just lit up for a bit. It is starting up again, so it should be fine. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.